Akitas are newcomers to American soil. Helen Keller brought the very first from Japan in 1937. Sick? Having a baby? In Japan, you wouldn't get these. You'd get this. A tiny Akita statue symbolizing health and well-being. In ancient Japan, Akitas were so highly regarded that only the ruling class was allowed to own them. They got fancy collars and the finest cuisine the royals had to offer. They are incredibly beautiful. They really are. Akitas are amazing. They're tough dogs. They're athletic and they're determined and they would take a bullet for you. But these days in the U.S., owning an Akita is more likely to raise your insurance rates than your status. Yep, just like the pit bull and the Rottweiler, the Akita is listed as high risk for biting and aggression by insurance companies. This is a dog that's very territorial, very protective, and is not going to be interested in sharing its space and sharing its time with too many other animals. That's because Akitas are one of the most primitive dogs on the planet, still very closely linked to the wolf. The Akita originated centuries ago in Japan in the harsh, cold snow country of the Akita Prefecture. This is a dog built for rugged trekking in polar environments. Its long legs and buff musculature allow it to climb steep mountains in deep snow. Akitas are members of the Spitz, or Nordic, dog family, known for fluffy, tightly curled tails, alert, fully pricked ears, and their plush fur. Those double coats consist of a coarse, weatherproof outer layer and a dense, soft and woolly undercoat. In fact, the breed faced extinction in World War II when they were killed for their pelts, which lined the coats of Japanese soldiers. In America, Akitas come in virtually any color and in three coat patterns. Solid, a tiger stripe pattern called brindle, and pinto, which is mostly white with sharply defined patches. These are not small dogs. The Akitas are very, very strong dogs. But for the right person, it's an amazing dog. It's just a companion for life. The Akita's need for early training may be the most important consideration for anyone thinking of adopting this breed. These dogs are very big and strong and have the ability to hurt you. So you want to establish the relationship that you're going to have very early on with these guys so that once they do get to their full size, they understand to follow you and not try and lead. When it comes to their living space, unless you've put in the time and effort to socialize your Akita, they should not live in apartments or condos. Like all large breeds, Akitas can suffer from joint dysplasia and bloat, a life-threatening swelling and twisting of the stomach. And grooming an Akita can be an issue for some folks. This is a dog with a lot of hair, and that hair gets everywhere. And think long and hard before you bring an Akita into your home. If you acclimated them in the beginning, they would be a great family dog. Akitas then stack up like this. It's probably best not to have them in an apartment building. Too many people and animals. They get fair marks for health, suffer the usual large breed problems such as bloat and dysplasia. Akitas shed heavily twice a year so grooming can be intense. They're trainable if you start them young. And be careful before you bring them into a family. Ah.